हेलो एवरीवन राइट तो हेलो एवरीवन वेरी गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू द वेबिनार ऑन एपीए मार्केट प्लेस प्रेजेंटेड टू यू बाय डब्ल्यूएसए टू एन एलटीआई टुगेदर आई एम गौरव श्रीवास्तव आई एम अ लीड आर्किटेक्ट इन एलटीआई एंड आई हैव ओवर 16 इयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन लीडिंग मेनी डिजिटल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशंस एंड आई विल बी कवरिंग अबाउट एपीए मार्केट प्लेस कांसेप्ट्स हियर राइट so uh, everyone you can put your questions uh, on the question window there on the screen at the same time we will be sharing this presentation with you and we are also recording this so the recordings would be available to you to go through it at a later point of time so you all are free to reach out to us for any of your questions later uh, later on as well you can reach out to us on linkedin or you can email it to us and we will definitely help to clarify your questions as well now uh, looking at the agenda today what we are going to cover so we'll start with the concepts of api marketplace we'll understand what marketplace is all about we'll look into couple of uh, real world case studies then we'll look into the building blocks of api marketplace and uh, we'll look into the details of the components followed by question and answer session now let us look at uh, the api marketplace all right so uh, today uh, digital transformation is a very common term used everywhere and every organization wants to transform their business using apis so when it comes to digital transformation api management is the core so we look into it that how api marketplace is beyond the api uh, management and why uh, it is so important for digital transformation now marketplace uh, this is a platform that uh, connects with the various technologies people like api publishers consumers technologies like analytics api management and it also uh, connects stakeholders and you can have many uh, events like hackathon and evangelism so this platform uh, for api marketplace provides capabilities to discover apis it does provide abilities to create and publish apis uh, it provides you the analytics around the apis and you can uh, look into all the analytics how your apis are being used now this api marketplace is core to any organization when it comes to leveraging the benefits of digital transformation so i personally say that uh without a marketplace digital transformation is incomplete now having said that wsa2 has a full fledged api management and api market uh, place platform that supports all the components so i definitely encourage you all to go and explore more about uh, api marketplace and uh, wsa2 platform because it has lot of benefits uh, when it comes to the implementation of apis now let us look into more detail on what api marketplace is all about we all are familiar with the term marketplace right it has been there for since ages right so a marketplace uh, as the name suggests let us look at the dictionary meaning of marketplace it's a place where you trade things you buy and sell different goods right now when i add api to it so the name suggests me that it must be a place where i should be trading apis or to be more precise i would be you know transacting with api usage so what i buy and sell is how the apis are going to be used apart from that api <clears throat> api management also connects your api producer and consumer so if you look at the diagram on the right side of the slide there are four more uh, main components to an api marketplace or rather these four components combined together form the marketplace your primary important components are your api publisher and api consumer right because without these two entities uh, it's it is of no use right apart from these two there are activities and technologies that enable api publisher and consumers to interact and you know consume the apis <laughs> now what is a good marketplace so uh, a good api marketplace should be simple to use uh, so that uh, api developers can easily publish it and api consumers can easily search for the apis that they want to use at the same time it should have a detailed 
documentation on the APIs. There should be a, a mechanism to provide feedback or that enables the interaction between API developers and consumers. So these characteristics uh, you will see in most of the API marketplace and that defines the quality of good API marketplace. Now, having said that, uh, what API marketplace is all about, uh, we have to see what are the benefits uh, to an enterprise to, uh, for implementing an API marketplace. So unless there are any uh, significant benefits, there is no point in implementing such kind of technologies, right? So uh, now the very important benefits are uh, ease of discovery. Uh, so uh, API consumer can easily go to the portal, search for the APIs that he needs, and uh, the marketplace should uh, help him uh, in searching his APIs. Now, it should promote a reuse culture, so uh, you should not invent the wheel every time. The API should be reusable, and different uh, uh, you know, apps should be able to reuse your APIs. Uh, then it should drive innovation. Uh, because of your APIs, it should promote the culture of having, uh, you know, building up different revenue streams and different uh, applications. The organization also gets to know the effectiveness of an API. Like if an API is being created and uh, how it is being used in the market, what kind of revenue that API is bringing into the organization. So there are tools and methods available to gauge the effectiveness of an API. And definitely it fosters the participations, communication channels are created between multiple stakeholders and uh, much needed feedback is uh, provided through those channels. Now, uh, looking at the key components of an API marketplace. So uh, friends here, uh, you go for any marketplace, you will see some uh, contents which are common. But more the features are, uh, it will help you to make a better API marketplace for the APIs that you develop. Now some of the key components uh, are publisher and consumer. These are the entities that will you know, publish your APIs and consume your APIs. So that are anyway going to be there for every API marketplace. Without publisher and consumer, marketplace will not exist. Apart from this, there would be different components that will aid or that will help the consumer and publisher. These are management uh, portals like API management, uh, then developer portal where a uh, consumer should be able to go and uh, get the details of the API. API catalog where you should be able to see all the APIs available for consumption out of which you can you know, selectively use the APIs that fits your purpose. And it should have a good documentation. Otherwise, uh, consumers will not understand what this API is all about, what it does. Then tools, testing, and then community for interaction. Uh, if you are using an API, you should definitely provide a testing platform as well. Uh, otherwise, without testing your APIs, uh, developers cannot go into the production line. Now let us look at a uh, uh, real world case study. Uh, now this case study is uh, about a bank that uh, wanted to go through a digital transformation. It aspires to have an open banking APIs and it wanted uh, you know, to have multiple apps connecting to it and provide different platforms uh, for third party organizations to do banking with them. Now I'll not go into the detail of uh, what was done in this case study or so, but rather I would like to show you how a marketplace would look like. So let me share my screen with you all here. Give me a few seconds to share the screen.
now i hope my screen is visible to all of you uh, yes i can see it so yes so uh, this is a uh, live uh, portal or live marketplace uh, wherein apis are listed by this bank these are open banking apis and if you see some of the characteristics that a good api marketplace has uh, these are the message formats like if you see what this bank is trying to show uh, it does tell you what kind of message formats it supports then it talks about the security consideration like this banking api is, is secured with oauth2 and open id connect so what you will need in order to connect to their apis versioning sandbox environment because definitely you will not go into the production without testing it so a sandbox environment must be provided now let us look into a functional api here a business api so since this is a banking system you can look into the get account api so what is the url <laughs> that will uh, invoke your api that url is available parameters that are accepted by your api request and response sample formats so this all these things comes under a good documentation for your api the more uh, examples you give more realistic uh, values you provide your consumers will understand your apis better and they would be in a good position to use it now apart from this uh, different organizations implement api marketplace in a different way so like this particular bank uh, implemented it uh, by providing a, a semi functionality when it comes to self service you have to reach out to the bank to get the access to the apis but a full fledged api marketplace can uh, provide a fully automated feature of you know subscribing the apis and paying for that apis there itself so you can always monetize your apis you can have just for an example you may say that there are 1000 api calls available for 10 dollar price so those kind of functionalities you can implement so i'll now move to the next case study okay um thank you gaurav thank you so um so this is a, a case study that uh, we basically experienced first hand uh the the customer at hand is uh, one of the largest uh, telecoms in uh, south east asia and located in colombo sri lanka so uh, the the need was that uh, dialogue asia uh, basically had a lot of uh, business units and then within each of these business units they had multiple uh, user uh, developer teams now each one of these developer teams were in the habit of basically creating their own services apis and then using them as they needed there was no uniformity there was no economies uh, of reuse nothing like that so um but then what they realized was uh, there was a lot of uh, redoing uh, that was happening because of this practice and uh, what we together with uh, dialog did was we came up with a, a a strategy in order to build a marketplace so we did it in a phased manner uh, first of all we made that marketplace internal and we basically uh, uh, took all the apis from each one of these business units and then uh, made those public across these business units but still private uh, for the outside world and uh, promoted reuse then the next phase was basically uh, creating uh, selecting some of these apis which uh, were also useful for the external world and uh, basically getting into partnerships with other organizations like banks hospitals and so on so uh, this marketplace uh, became an ecosystem and uh, how, how did this get promoted so uh yes we had the w so to stack in place but in addition to that uh, there were a lot of workshops a lot of uh, 
concept uh, discussions which happen and then we uh, basically organized a couple of hackathons uh, which we did with them and this was mainly useful when this started to become a public marketplace so that third party um, application creators they could come and uh, basically uh, uh, learn how to use these APIs and uh, basically create some cool applications so that uh, both them, the partners and Dialog basically benefited. So that's uh, a, a use case, a case study where uh, a marketplace was built in a phased manner and today this is uh, one of the largest marketplaces that we have uh, to quote. So uh, having uh, basically given you an overview of another uh, real world case study. So now I'll basically move on to uh, uh, seeing what the building blocks are of a marketplace and how it maps onto WSO2. So I think we had um, should also basically uh, along those lines. So now, um, so in order to set the foundation for a marketplace, uh, we need some basic components. And these components basically comes from the WSO2 API manager. So like Gauru mentioned, you need a, you need a publisher because uh, the API first needs to be uh, designed, created, and then you basically need to be able to uh, govern these APIs. And uh, once they are, uh, you also need a developer portal where uh, the consumers basically can come and uh, uh, subscribe to these APIs and uh, make use of uh, these APIs. And then behind the scenes, so from a marketplace point of view, the most prominent item that uh, people would see the consumers is the uh, developer portal. However, in order for that entire uh, system to work, you also need the gateway, you need the security component, you need the, um, the traffic manager component and so on. So this diagram basically shows how WSO2 API manager, uh, which is uh, of a component uh, based model, uh, uh, fulfills the requirements that a marketplace needs from a product point of view and then how it also basically uh, links to the different services, microservices, systems that are there uh, in an organization who wish to expose their services as uh, uh, managed APIs which can be accessed by external people also. So. Uh, Right, now um, having set that foundation, so I'll go a little bit deeper into the process of how the different uh, uh, actors would behave. So in a marketplace uh, context, uh, you basically have two main actors who are the API providers and then the API consumer. So the organization who wishes to expose the API so that um, internal and external uh, uh, parties can make use of them are the API providers. So from a uh, product component point of view, the providers mainly would basically work uh, in the API publisher component. So that's a, a GUI based component. You would see that uh, when I will show a quick glimpse of the product. And so then the natural procedure of uh, basically um, creating an API and make it available to the outside would be first for an API developer who basically would first do that initial design of the API. So it could be uh, uh, looking at the need at hand uh, at whatever uh, assets that you already have and then basically expose this, uh, create an API that uh, fits the need. So once that is done, uh, then uh, basically uh, uh, from the API uh, provider side itself, a, an API product manager sort of a person would basically take over uh, bringing that API to the external world. So all the 
all the endpoint details, uh, all the um, connectivity details and stuff like that would be first. Uh, and of course, the design of the API would be done by the uh, by the API developer. Then the product manager would basically uh, be notified that an API is now uh, created and before it needs to be published, please add on the business details uh, and then publish it. So that person would basically log in, add in the various business plans that are there, uh, basically uh, add in whatever um, security uh, policies, uh, rate limiting policies that are needed, and uh, then initiate the publish action. So as soon as that happens, as soon as an API is published, then that API basically becomes visible to the to the next set of uh, the next set of people uh, who belong to the uh, API consumer category. So that that's the second important actor. So the consumers can now log in to the developer portal. So if you are logging in uh, to this developer portal uh, the first time. Basically, they would uh, prefer to have a very smooth uh, experience of being able to self-service themselves into this portal. So they might go through a, a sign-up process, and then basically once that is done, basically uh, look at what APIs are there uh, and uh, try out a couple of APIs. Then once uh, you're satisfied, uh, it's now time to basically start developing your application using this API. So they can uh, uh, basically get some samples to so use an SDK which is available on the developer portal and then basically create this API and uh, the application using this API and finally also provide some feedback uh, so that the providers get this information, other consumers can get this information and so on. So this is a typical flow that happens uh, when basically creating APIs using an API management product and targeting an API marketplace. Right. Uh, so now let's go to uh, each one of these uh, actors' journeys. And uh, basically, this is where I'll start showing you um, how the WC2 components uh, would work in. So I'll uh, start uh, my screen share so that we can uh, get into the product. So what I will basically be doing is now uh, going on to uh, uh, going through that journey uh, of these two specific actors on uh, the WSO2 API Manager product. Okay. So I hope uh, uh, that my screen is visible now. Now, what you see here is uh, the developer portal. So, so now looking at the capabilities. So, uh, when you when you basically uh, see the developer portal, you need to be able to get some context of what it is. So, uh, a, a, a landing page which just gives you some context on uh, what uh, is available in this marketplace. Uh, and what help you can get from this marketplace and so on would be really good. And then any messages that you would want to uh, uh, show. Uh, so we also have a banner if you want, if you have added some new APIs, if you have added some seasonal APIs and so on. And uh, of course, the language switch, uh, if, you, if your marketplace uh, users, your consumers are going to be of uh, different uh, uh, language uh, speakers. And then, of course, uh, contact us form so that you can uh, basically contact the marketplace owners uh, before you actually start using this if you want any more clarification. So, so I'm a, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, act as if I'm an API consumer. So I basically want to start using this API marketplace. So um, I don't have a sign, uh, a login. So what I'm going to do is I need to first create an account and I'm going to uh, uh, give a username. 
that I would want to basically use. And then, uh, so you can basically have a self sign up form like this, uh, where you get some basic details. Uh, uh, from the user, and then you can perhaps go edit that later on. So uh, I'm just giving uh, some information that can be used. Then in this form, so the, the form that you have here is what you can see is default. So you can enable to see many more claims if you wish to. And you also can add something like this. So we have GDPR, GDPR restrictions in some regions of the world. So you, if you are using some of these details for other purposes, like getting your email to send your newsletter, then you need to get uh, the consent from users specifically. So that's uh, this bit. And then, of course, so let's uh, basically go on to uh, being registered. Right. So user registration was successful. Uh, so I'm now uh, logging in as uh, that new user whom I uh, basically uh, created. Now, when I go into the API section, so I would see some APIs. Uh, and uh, it's also possible to see uh, the different categories of APIs. Now, if I go into each one of these API categories, so um, it's only some of these which I can see. Uh, so now what basically uh, happens here is each one of these users who log in, uh, sign up and then log in to the portal uh, are also assigned roles. And then based on their roles, you are uh, made uh, you are you are made privy to certain APIs that you can see and work with. So this particular user, uh, we just did a brand new sign up. Uh, we didn't go through an internal role uh, assigning process, and because of that, I can just see some of the very basic uh, APIs. So what I will do is I will log out uh, from that particular user. I will log in as another user whom I have added some uh, roles so that basically I can see more APIs there, sorry. And um, yeah, so now basically, so some of those APIs that you saw earlier are also here because these are public APIs. But in addition to that, you have a, 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 a lot more APIs uh, basically that you can see. So this goes on to uh, multiple pages. So if you uh, uh, go, uh, you uh, can like uh, scroll to different uh, pages uh, according to the pagination that is there. And again, you have basically the categories uh, of the different uh, APIs that are there. So some of these uh, categories are there, and some of these categories are now newly available for this particular user. So this particular user is specifically a stacked API user. So uh, this user has been assigned a stat role so that they can see these APIs. Now, so you have APIs. And uh, then uh, if you want to basically search API, so you have all of these search options. That's also something that uh, helps you to uh, do uh, a search to find APIs fast, so that also helps in the discovery option. And we will next go on to how you can subscribe to APIs. So what we have is a concept called an application into which you can bundle in one or two APIs together. So by doing that, you could select a couple of uh, APIs, and then you can basically uh, start invoking that. So what we I have done here is I've just uh, created an application which is using the uh, the Pizza Shack API, and uh, in that, so I have already selected uh, the throttling tier, uh, the token type, uh, the work of status, uh, who created this application, and so on. And uh, I also basically have uh, the keys generated. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to generate a new key. Uh, because uh, this was created some time back. And okay, 
So now what we, a typical user would do is, so now uh, basically that subscription was done. And the subscription can, of course, be done via uh, a wizard, where it takes you from step to step. So I want to now basically go to this Pizza Shack API. I want to try it out before I start using it in my application. So I have a test key. So what I generated is a test key so that I can use it within uh, uh, the portal itself in order to test the API and see. But then once you put it into your application, you would have to basically get a proper token according to the grant type and then use it. So um, I just go into the easiest of the resources. Uh, so I just need to say try it out and then basically uh, I do the execution. So, so what you see here is uh, you would see the response that came, the code, and uh, also a curl command on the request URL that you could use if you don't want to use this tool in order to uh, basically try out this API. So you could take this request URL and use a tool like Postman to invoke this. Uh, so um, you also could like check out the things like uh, whether the throttling actually works and what is the message that you get. So I have a, uh, a simple rate limit throttling that I have attached to this. Uh, so this basically needs to get uh, throttled out after 10 requests. So now you basically get um, uh, have an understanding, okay, if I'm throttled out, this is the code that I get and this is the message that I get so that you can basically make use of that inside your application. Okay. So uh, then uh, also for uh, in order to see more details, so you could basically uh, look at the documentation. So when an API is created, the necessary documentation is also uh, can be created or uploaded. So this basically was an inline uh, uh, documentation and this is markdown. So you could like add more details using markdown. You could also basically attach files uh, that can be downloaded uh, so that uh, you uh, can provide your users with more details as needed. And uh, if you go to the API, uh, so yeah. Uh, and uh, then so another useful uh, thing that you would get with an uh, um, API uh, before you start using it. So now you're happy with it. And then we basically say, okay, these are the SDKs that we have available. So you could pick which one you want. So let's say I want to um, use uh, a Java application in order to basically uh, uh, create my app, uh, a application which uses the API. So then... Uh, so, uh, for, guys, I think we uh, lost the connection. Let us wait for a few more seconds. Let us wait for Shiro to join back. So, uh, in the meantime, someone had asked whether the presentation and the recordings will be available. So, answer is yes. We are going to share the recordings and the presentations with everyone. So, uh, now, uh, someone has asked that uh, who should drive the need for an API marketplace. So now that uh, depends to larger extent that what purpose you want to solve. You can uh, have this, uh, you know, prepared for your internal consumers, or uh, that is within the organization, wherein you may not uh, generate the revenue from these APIs, but uh, you may want to have a, a common platform or common portal where people will come and search for APIs. While if you are looking for, uh, you know, creating new revenue streams for your business and you want uh, you want third party or external lab developers to consume it, you may want to have a dedicated API marketplace. And in that case, your business uh, would drive that because they would be the people who would, uh, you know, suggest on how the revenue stream can be created while your API will aid that. Hi everyone. Um, sorry for the uh, sorry for the technical difficulty. Um, until Shiro joins us uh, back, um, Gaurav, we have around 19 questions uh, in the 
from the audience. Um, do you want me to read out the questions so maybe we could spend this time answering some of those? Yes, sure. Uh, so one of the questions here, um, can you please uh, map WSO2 tools with each of marketplace features? So these are the features that we had shown in the earlier slides. Uh, would you like to take that question? And we have another question on who should drive the need for an API marketplace. Yep, I, I did answer that. Uh, so hold on. Now, for the API marketplace need, uh, who should drive is now uh, that depends on how the organization wants to uh, utilize. It can be created for uh, internal consumption within the organization. And if uh, the plan is to utilize it across uh, the market and generate new revenue streams, in that case, business has to uh, drive it along with the technology team uh, because the APIs are going to help in uh, revenue generation. So that has to align with the business goals as well. Fantastic. Uh, one more question here. Um, what are various security aspects which can be enabled for marketplace for banking customers? This feature doesn't make sense. What's your opinion on that? Right. So uh, again, uh, in, in this question, different uh, banks handle it uh, differently. Uh, some people would like to. Now again, we have to uh, understand here that the banks are uh, sharing the uh, critical information here, and it cannot be just available to anyone. So a couple of examples I'll take here that how I have seen that different banks are handling it. Uh, so uh, one of the banks, what uh, they do is uh, they do not provide access to their portal by default. So no one can come in and search their portal for the API. So uh, an organization, a third party organization has to reach out to the bank to get the uh, authentication details. Basically, they will get the credentials. Then only they would be able to log in into their portal and search the APIs. Right. Now, this is one way. Another bank, what I saw, the example that I had shown, what this this bank handles in a different way. They make their API portal public uh, so that anyone can come in and, you know, uh, search through the APIs and look at what kind of banking APIs are available. But what they did is they have uh, hidden the complete path. Just the root path is hidden and just the Absolute path is given there on how to access the API. Second, they have enabled, or rather they want their consumers to reach out to the bank to get the credentials to access the API. So uh, it, that is actually a manual uh, process there. Uh, consumer will send an email to the bank and then bank will uh, contact you or get back to you with the credential and then only you can reach out to the API. So there are different methodologies uh, that different banks are following in the market right now. And uh, it totally depends on how uh, you would uh, want to handle it. Now, mapping the components, definitely uh, there was one question someone had asked, like, uh, can we map the components of uh, uh, WSO2, like which component provide what kind of features when it comes to marketplace? So uh, definitely we can map it uh, for each of those. Uh, but WSA2 comes with three main uh, components here, the WSA2 ESV, WSA2 APM, and the identity server. So with APIM, you get this uh, marketplace portal along with it, with which you can set it up. And uh, you can enable all the monetization aspects to it. Uh, you have to configure uh, the billing engine along with that. So that can generate, uh, you know, the monetization aspect and generate the revenues for your APIs. Thank you, Gaurav. Um, again, uh, apologies uh, for this technical uh, difficulty in uh, connecting with Shiro, but I think we have her back on the uh, webinar now. Uh, Shiro, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Great, then I will hand it over to you to continue from where we left off. Thank you. Right. Uh, I'm very sorry about the technical glitch. So I'll just quickly finish off what uh, I had after the uh, uh, portal and publisher 
views. So in addition to um, uh, the product components that are needed in order to build that base marketplace. Uh, so we also need to consider how uh, deployment of these components should be done and the ability of uh, the flexibility of deployment that is available so that you can basically uh, create that perfect uh, deployment that you have in mind. So uh, we have like uh, three uh, I have mentioned three uh, main deployment patterns here. So the first one is where uh, we have a shared marketplace where uh, you have a marketplace that is used, being used, for example, by multiple departments in an organization. But all of these uh, departments, the users in uh, the, the API providers and then the consumers, all of them basically make use of a single deployment uh, and the publisher and the portal is shared across all of them. So the the, the way basically their uh, APIs are controlled for visibility is either using uh, the role-based uh, 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 visibility control that I explained earlier, or else we could also basically deploy uh, each one of these departments as a tenant. Uh, so where we basically uh, provide uh, runtime uh, uh, independence is by having a gateway each for each one of these departments so that they basically are not affected by any other department's uh, usage of API. So that's uh, one pattern. Then the second uh, pattern would be to basically have a central marketplace. So what happens here is each department has their own uh, publisher and, st uh, and developer portal and of course uh, the gateways that goes together with it. But whenever an API is uh, created and published, in addition to being published on the department's uh, developer portal, it also gets uh, pushed into a central marketplace. So. Uh, external people then uh, can basically come and look at this central uh, marketplace developer portal and when they want to basically after they try out and do everything when they want to basically so after they want to like decide they want to subscribe to an API and then try it out they will be redirected to that particular department's uh, uh, developer portal in order to continue with that action. So. Uh, there is a separation of uh, deploying of these uh, uh, components uh, where the marketplace component accessed by everyone including external people is uh, a, a component which is uh, deployed separately. Then the next uh, uh, pattern is so, so we hear about uh, a, a lot about cloud uh, deployments today and uh, how basically uh, uh, we also can use hybrid deployments if needed. So this variation is where that central uh, marketplace, so it can either be the, uh, the shared marketplace or that uh, central developer portal only, but different uh, components have in their own developer portals. All of that management side of things would be on a cloud deployed, but then all the runtime components like the gateway uh, would be deployed uh, closer to where the backend uh, services or APIs are. So that's another, uh, uh, that's another uh, situation of de uh, deploying a marketplace. Now, uh, so we look at components and capabilities, but we also need to think of beyond just the publisher, the developer portal, and so on. So what when you when you think about an API marketplace, you need to understand that what you're building here is an ecosystem. And then look at uh, what other things can be done using a particular product stack. So now you have the APIs, and then when you, uh, so the APIs are going to be used by application. So once applications come into the picture to basically expand this ecosystem, you could add a application marketplace. You could basically add uh, identity 
capabilities into this so that you could uh, do SSO across different applications, provide application security, uh, and then also support the federation that is needed uh, across for accessing these applications. Then marketplaces, so in general, needs to have some sort of activity management. You do one thing, then you basically need to do a couple of checks, get it, get an approval, and so on. So adding in a workflow component in order to basically manage such flows is uh, where you can enhance building a marketplace. And finally, being able to monitor, uh, analyze, and learn from what is happening. I mean, so the the, the 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 analytics capabilities that are there. Uh, is also something uh, that you need to look at when building such an ecosystem. Okay, so I think uh, that uh, with that I will hand over the presentation back to Gaurav. Sure. All right, so uh, now we have seen what API marketplace is all about. Now, uh, there are a few things. Uh, you have built your API, uh, but no one is consuming it. So such APIs are of no use, right? So next step is you go to a marketplace, right? You publish it on a marketplace, and still there is no consumer. No one is subscribing to that API. So this API is still of no use. It is not generating any business benefit to your organization and nor any revenues. So uh, it's like uh, marketing your APIs so you have to do certain more things in order to uh, enable a culture of uh, user using APIs to build applications. And there are certain uh, methodologies that are used. So this is irrespective of what marketplace you are using or what kind of technologies you are using to uh, have your marketplace. But these practices are followed. And to summarize it, we can say that the success of an API marketplace depends on the number of applications uh, and number of users using your APIs. And you know every organization needs to encourage the consumer to use uh, the API platform. Now, what are the ways? Uh, there, you can incentivize the API consumers uh, for promoting reuse. And when you say incentivize, it can be both monetary as well as non-monetary aspects. And if these are third party or external systems, you can definitely have a revenue sharing model there. Uh, you can generate the links and you can, for example, you can say that 10% of the revenue will go to the app that will generate the business via those APIs. So there are different ways of uh, incentivizing. Organizations come up uh, with their own ways as well because you might want to incentivize uh, the consumers within the organization itself, which is going to be a non-monetary incentive. Uh, now, uh, looking into another option or another way of doing it, uh, which is engaging and evangelizing. So engaging. So now assume that you have your own YouTube channel or your Facebook page. What do you do to engage your uh, subscribers? You need to post your videos continuously, right? You will frequently update your YouTube channel so that there are different viewers and they, you keep them interested. So in, 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 the, in this case as well, you will do the similar thing, right? Conceptually, you have your APIs into the marketplace wherein you would want uh, or you would like to update the API documentation uh, frequently. You would uh, like to publish APIs more often. You might want to publish the uh, you know analytics around that API, how that API is being used. Uh, you can organize hackathons uh, because that will be a platform wherein you can bring in your API consumers and API developers and stakeholders together and you know demo them that how to build the products out of your APIs. So these kind of events to socialize different stakeholders are required in order to uh, have that API economy and bring that culture of uh, reuse and culture of bringing apps on top of that. Now, opening up the communication channels uh, with your stakeholders. Now, your APIs are there, consumers are consuming it, but we still need to open up the communication channel with all the stakeholders, consumers, and API developers. Different kind of information you can share, like what kind of business strategy your organization has, uh, the market directions, how 
uh, your APIs are being used, promotions, uh, opportunities, many things you can share. Uh, your channels can be many. Uh, there can be portals, newsletters, and any other channel as well. But the communication is very important because it should not happen that once your API is published, there is no communication with the consumer on the future plans of your APIs or your business model. So that has to be there. Now, how I the, there is one example that I gave it to everyone when it comes to socializing it. You make a world class API, good enough. You put it in a marketplace, good enough. But it is of no use if there are no consumers to it. So end of the day, your <clears throat> uh, digital transformation gets completed only when your APIs are being reused in the market. So with that, I would like to uh, close this and uh, go to the question answer sessions. So uh, Shiro, some of the questions were very specific to the product. I would like uh, your help in answering them. Yeah, sure. sure. So, um... Yeah, so there was a question on uh, how uh, uh, the mapping of the visitor tools with each of the marketplace features. I think we covered that. So basically, from a provider point of view, uh, the publisher component of API manager, and then uh, from a consumer point of view, the developer portal uh, in API manager. So that's just setting the API management part there. Then, like I said, so when you're going for uh, a full marketplace, you might need to do a federation. You might need to do SSO across different applications and so on. So that's where uh, the WSO2 identity and access management uh, product comes into play. And if you want to basically also do some uh, integration behind the scenes, so an organization might not have uh, all their services in a very API uh, proxy friendly manner. So they might need to do some integration across uh, this before they expose it as a managed API. So that's where the enterprise integrator comes in. And uh, the workflows for basically managing a customized sign up flow, then managing overall activities over that complete uh, extended ecosystem. Uh, so those are the different components that basically uh, can be used. Uh, so Gaurav, do you want to make the next one, which is uh, what's a good strategy roadmap for API management? Sure. Yeah. So now, uh, when it comes to uh, defining the strategy for a good uh, API marketplace, you uh, definitely need to plan uh, for the APIs. Uh, you have to categorize. So here are the things. First of all, uh, any API uh, within an organization, they all can be categorized into three broad levels. Uh, your uh, organization as a consumer of the APIs, external APIs, your organization as a publisher of uh, your APIs. And third, uh, are APIs for internal consumption within the organization. So it doesn't matter what business domain it is, you can always categorize your APIs into these three categories. Then you have to pick up each of these categories separately, and you have to plan it out that how do you want to address it. So example, uh, example the API is that uh, needs to be exposed by your organization, they may be categorized into uh, the APIs which will be built, with basically which will generate some revenues, or there could be APIs which you want your third-party organizations to consume for free because that enables them to do business with you. Right. So according to that, you have to plan that particular category. Then another category would be how you would like to consume the third-party APIs within your organization. So that will involve many other factors as well, like what kind of security model you want to have because you are giving access to external world to your uh, data and your APIs. At the same time, uh, there you may want to have an API gateway via uh, which you want to go and uh, enable some analytics over there as well. And third uh, would be the API consumption within your organization. So that 
can be handled totally separate. Uh, many organizations we have seen not uh, making an internal API uh, portal, then they just have the APIs and consume it within the organization. But if you see, uh, we definitely recommend that we enable uh, API portal and marketplace within the organization as well. You may keep it for free, but that generates all the uh, analytics around the APIs, how it is being used across different departments and uh, you know what value it is adding. So basically these three categories, you have to segregate your APIs and then you have to strategize how you want to handle it based on the business you are dealing with. So there is no thumb rule that will fit uh, all the scenarios uh, based on different business and different organizations you have to take a call. But yes, these three categories are going to exist in all the businesses. Okay, I'll, um, I'll take the next question because I think it's related to um, what is the product. So it says like if the insurance industry body wants to set up an API marketplace and different insurance companies want to publish APIs, how will the WSO2 platform support publishing the same API from different companies? So I think what um, you're, you're looking at is something which is happening currently at the uh, banking world where we have these open API uh, initiative, open banking initiative. So again, uh, so it's an industry where each uh, organization within that industry basically needs to expose a standard API from each one of them. Now, if you want to basically uh, do this on a single marketplace, then uh, what you the, the option that you have is for each one of these uh, insurance companies to basically become a tenant and then expose that uh, API which uh, basically has the same definition. So that doesn't basically make it uh, make any uh, cross uh, against the uh, APIs. But however. Uh, you might still have to uh, uh, do a bit of uh, pre-naming in order to indicate from which bank uh, this basically is coming. And then in that case, having a, um, a common marketplace uh, might not be the solution, but instead what the solution would be is to have an aggregation service in between each one of these insurance companies and the actual marketplace that is going to be exposed. So we basically have a integration component which talks to multiple insurance companies, uh, do that aggregation behind the scenes and then expose it as a single API which can be consumed by applications uh, and users who use this application. So that's one way to do that. And uh, if it is just the same API but different uh, banks wanting to expose it then uh, so um, another thing is we also need to uh, keep in mind the reuse aspect as well. Uh, so then the next question I'm just going to uh, skim through this a bit quickly. So yes you can use your own identity provider for uh, federating the sign up authentication and authorization that's a possibility. So that's why I said like uh, if it is uh, if you want to build that ecosystem where yeah, you basically have existing users in multiple IDPs, uh, then you can basically do that through federation uh, with the WSO2 API manager. Uh, and uh, yes, so if you want to basically get the number of subscribers on that same API tile, so what you see is uh, the default API marketplace view that we have created, the developer portal. Uh, there was another question about this. If you want, you can white label this uh, based on uh, what you want the developer portal to look like. And if you really want, you can also build uh, a marketplace on your own. And there you can basically put in whatever information on each one of those tiles because the product has REST APIs, which is basically used even by our own uh, UI. So you can uh, do any one of those things. Uh, and the difference between the developer portal and a marketplace. So yes, uh, uh, most of it is using the same underlying features. But when a marketplace comes into place, you get that additional level of high level context. So you can 
basically integrate with the content management system for example so the landing page that i showed you was a very basic landing page but if needed you could basically uh, integrate that into a regular content management system get some use cases get some pre pages uh, customized into the marketplace portal so that users get an understanding of what the overall business use cases are available by using these APIs and then basically gradually begin into the API documentation as such. Uh, so I can mark those two as uh, being answered. And uh, yeah, so you can basically, uh, users can go and uh, uh, rate APIs and that information again is available via REST API and that's how we also uh, show it on the uh, developer portal. So yes, and um, so there was a question about uh, uh, service mesh plan so that's not um, very much related to what we're talking today but a quick update we already have an integration with Istio and we're working towards uh, basically uh, doing more with Istio being uh, uh, be able to be either the uh, ingress gateway or the uh, sidecar gateway for services uh, within the Istio service mesh um, and um, so Gaurav do you want to take uh, this question I think it's specifically addressed to you how API economy and marketplace are linked well right so uh, now uh, again uh, if, if you publish your APIs in API marketplace uh, from there uh, you can generate uh, revenue by monetizing your APIs. So uh, basically, uh, your whole API economy revolves around how you monetize your uh, APIs, and WS2 provides specific features to do that. They have, WS2 has a dedicated uh, billing engine that can be enabled and configured to uh, have your custom reports and billing plans in the background. So all that can enable the API economy but not everything in API marketplace is going to generate the revenue. So uh, there is a slight difference between that. So uh, there was a, so one question, question is uh, about. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so uh, whether it makes sense to have internal and external APIs in different marketplace portals, or is it better to have them in a single place with the right access control features? So it's it's uh, it's from a management point of view and if, if the underlying product basically gives you very good uh, uh, access control capabilities then you could have both of those on the same portal uh, because anyway if the online product basically gives you the flexibility of doing complete runtime isolation of those uh, then uh, then basically uh, ex uh, uh, spending more on having multiple developer portals uh, is not really needed. So you basically can uh, make use of the right access uh, control features and uh, get that done. And uh, Gaurav, I think you were going to answer one more question. Yeah, I, I was saying on the same question that it uh, also uh, also depends how you want to uh, manage it because your uh, a portal for external uh, parties or external organization is going to have uh, more features compared to the APIs that you want to expose internally. So you may uh, have a uh, dedicated feedback mechanism, more analytics around that. But you may not want to have all those analytics and uh, all those features for the internal APIs. So that also depends on how you design your portal. Uh, 
Okay, so we have uh, two more updates on the service mesh side. So we are currently focusing on Istio because we feel that that has more uh, a following. Uh, so uh, that's where our focus is now, but maybe in the future. So currently it's more on Istio. So someone has asked whether we could give examples of APIs which we are referring to. I'm not quite sure what the, the APIs are. So if you could uh, like send up a follow-up question with a bit more details, we could perhaps look at that. Uh, so any license required to place our API in the marketplace? So again, is this from a provider point of view? Uh, if so, yes. So you have the ability from the product point of view to go through a couple of uh, steps before you can actually publish an API so that it's visible on the marketplace. So if an organization or if an industry has some uh, publishing uh, controls, then the uh, WCDP manager product is able to do that through uh, lifecycle state uh, workflow extension, where you could basically involve doing those different checks, either automated or manual. And then finally, basically, if all checks are OK, a license is then granted. And then that basically goes into the uh, marketplace. Uh, is there anything? Uh, but do you want to add to that, Kauru? Uh, no, sure. I'm good with that. Okay. Right. Uh, so, okay, so this is an interesting question where you have a large organization, many business units which are not linked, and they have two or more API management tools being used. And they don't want to basically throw out any of these tools, but then basically objective is to make management of API more effectively. So I'm assuming effectively means also having a single marketplace. So yes, uh, we, we can do that. So we actually have got uh, uh, people asking about this capability from us. So like I said, uh, uh, the, the management part of the API is the gateway, the, the, the security part might still be two different uh, underlying products. However, if you want to have a single marketplace, uh, you can have uh, uh, WSO2 as that single marketplace. And then, because mar uh, the WSO2 product has REST APIs through which you could uh, basically publish, uh, uh, create APIs and then publish them onto the developer portal. So in these cases, the publisher uh, the, the creation of the APIs initially might happen at these two other uh, API management products. But as a side uh, effect, they would also create that API through the REST API on the WC2 product. And then basically once uh, the APIs are ready to be published, they again use the, uh, the REST API to do that publishing so that uh, whenever that API is deployed onto uh, gateway X and gateway Y, X and Y being the different API management products, WSO2 has, that, uh, has those APIs on uh, its developer portal, and that can be the organization central marketplace. So that's one way of uh, basically uh, handling that. Um, Okay, so then do you see an API marketplace to be a lot more than just REST APIs? Do you see in the future this is a true marketplace of different kinds of APIs interfaces that you want to sell, cover topics, and maybe file interfaces, and so on? Uh, so uh, from a tech point of view, uh, uh, it all depends on who the consumers are and uh, how they need to basically make use of this. So if they're still looking at uh, making use of this as a uh, exposed HTTP endpoint, then at the marketplace, what we're going to expose is this. But underlying, yes, together with an additional component, you could convert that into a, 
something that can be exposed uh, through a regular marketplace. Uh, from a business point of view, like, do you want to add anything to that, Gaurav? Uh, right, so uh, I think we have basically covered all the questions uh, that we have uh, received. And if you are not getting any more questions, so we could perhaps wrap this off and uh, Apologies again for uh, uh, having a couple of technical breaches uh, uh, during the webinar, but we hope that uh, the information that you gathered was useful. And if you have further questions, please do reach out to us. Uh, uh, you have uh, the slides will be uh, shared with you, and so would be the recording. Uh, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. And thank you, Gaurav. Yep, thank you. Thank you, all the listeners. Thanks for taking out time and joining uh, this webinar. And uh, hopefully we'll conduct more webinars in the future. And hopefully see you again there. Thank you. Have a good evening and stay safe.